technical mistakes. Maybe Usman Afan did this. Maybe Abu Bakr Siddiq did this, and Zaid did yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Sahabas later on burnt something or less. Blah, 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 blah. Could be anything. And this is the first ayah which says that you know what this book, there's a promise of Allah. Anyone else, anyone, even if they try their best, they cannot fiddle with this book because the promise of it, the, if, if it being the the uh, the completeness and the perfection of that very message is in this book. Yeah. So uh, this is the first fitan that we already are seeing now. We already have that. And this, it, even the Quran begins with almost the same ayah, Surah Baqarah. Yeah. Like, Dhalika Kitabu La so There is yeah. no uh, doubt about this yeah. book. So this and actually here shows it says us, no deviance. Yeah, this, this is, this is a, a clear declaration <laughs> that uh, one of the many fitan of uh, Dajjal is yeah. against the very uh, uh, concept of Quran's perfection okay. and completion. And... Uh, uh, invariability that there are no versions of the Quran and there's no uh, no tampering or fabrication in any sorts in the context or in the dialect or in the meaning or in the sequence or in the stress stress is where Allah Ta'ala has put the stress on a certain word or in the phrasing I and mean, there's so many levels of balagha that you know we, 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 we we'll have to go through that so this is going to be the star of the biggest fitan that there are wrong angles and right angles. Yeah. There are wrong levels and le uh, right levels. There are more important levels and there are less important levels. There's no such thing like that in the Quran. Quran is as complete from whatever angle you look at. Yeah. It's as correct from whatever angle you look at because there are schools right now opening inside the Islamic Ummah. that are actually talking about, uh, of course there are Muslims by, by any meaning, but they, they represent Muslims and then they put, uh, for example, the Qadianis they put the meaning of the new prophethood from the Quran and now there's a lot of uh, 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 tahrimi ayahs hmm. which are taken from the Quran and then you know they just you know they take the meaning off hmm. so on and so forth uh, then there of course will come a time and there will be a lot of things proven from the Quran that there is a son of God there is a very clear indicator in these ayahs that the wow. concept of Ad-Dajjal will be in some, a lot of ways very verifiable by the Quranic uh, psychology of that time of that time that's the kind of psychology we'll be moving towards and that's where the, the where, where the first strike is blown well a lot of course, I'll just uh, quote a little story here like uh, I had a, I was having a debate once with a with a Christian in in England uh, so it was a Muslim Christian debate and there was a random guy who just walked in. I don't really remember, but he he asked me to to open the Quran. And in the Arabic text, he went to a certain point and he says, You see this? This shows that God has a son. And you Muslims have it right in front of your eyes, but you don't believe this. Oh my God. I really don't remember what he said, but it was like Mahdi wal Ahdi. There was a word of Mahad, the grave. From that he took out the meaning of Mahdi and from there he linked it to something in the Surah Maryam and he said that this is right here in front of you but you guys can't understand. Yeah. So probably this might uh, go to a bigger level. Or or the concept of a ruh which were asked by the Jews by the way. Yeah. Because when Allah says <coughs> Ruhullah of for yeah. Isa, that's a big confusion. Big, a lot yeah. of uh, Muslims have why is Allah calling Isa as Ruhullah? And yeah. not claiming that he is Allah at the same time, yeah. which is going to be a door opener for a lot of people who want fitan in Muslims, who are deviants themselves, and uh, who are uh, practically the cause of the biggest evil that is ever going to come upon us. Because Ruh Allah is the word that they actually ask as well, yeah. uh, Ruh. So this could could very well be, because that's what I used to think whenever I used to think of Surah Kaas first. And I was like, where is this concept coming from? Uh, of first the first ten ayahs. What are they? What, what is the concept that concept that these first ten ayahs are countering? And the first thing that comes into is uh, your mind is the c completion of the Quran. And right, the next third ayah is about the the son of God and the yeah. son of God concept. Even though it is blatantly refuted in so many ayahs, yeah. But the concept of ruh is very very complicated uh, and. People do talk about that. There are actually so many religions on Ruh and there's so many philosophies on Ruh. 
that Muslims will uh, end up, uh, you know, falling prey to so many of that sort of uh, uh, philosophical errors that there could be a problem in the, the Muslim ranks that yes, Isa is not an actual son, but maybe a spiritual son or the son in spirit or the son in light or yeah. whatever. I don't know, but because you never know what kind of uh, introspective, uh, uh, you know, errors human beings can make. But these three eyes really open that, that, that shine that light towards what is about to happen in the time of the Jal. Okay, so they have no knowledge about this, nor did their forefathers. It is a monstrous assertion that comes out of their mouths. What they say is nothing but lies. There you go. Now, this is a problem here. Uh, see, forefather is a key word here. Yeah. Because that literally shows that uh, the Jal is going to uh, be first befriending the Christians. Because Jews' forefathers never actually said that there's a son of God. You have to understand, Christians' forefathers yeah. are the only forefathers who came up with this concept. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the real problem and that's uh, the uh, foresight of the Quran telling us of what the Dajjal is going to do. Well, Allah Alam, of course, is one way of looking at it. Uh, that uh, he is going to come as Isa and uh, he is going to have all of their forefathers backing him up. Mm. And uh, he is naturally going to be called the Son of God and this is why he's going to be counter to the first ten ayahs. So, uh, why would he come as uh, uh, Isa uh, We have the hadith which literally sh uh, shows us uh, that uh, the Jal is going to mimic and mirror Isa The Prophet had a dream uh, and then of course uh, 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 during the journey of Miraj as well. The journey of Miraj, see with Surah Bani Israel again. Yeah. The first thing Prophet says is, where is this guy standing in the Kaaba? And Jibreel means says, this curly guy is, is uh, a Dajjal. So, the first thing that the Prophet sees in the journey of Miraj is a Dajjal. So, okay. he's sitting in the, uh, standing in the Kaaba. So, uh, of course… Was uh, it the dream where he's like walking behind? No, that's, not, that's a separate dream altogether. Okay. Uh, the, that's a totally different dream. That's the dream of uh, Prophet looking at Isa Islam doing the Tabaf of Kaaba. And then exactly and the then same And then right behind uh, Isa Islam is uh, a Dajjal doing exactly what Isa is doing because he's leaning on the shoulders of two men and two men are like, literally carrying him towards the Tawaf and uh, the Dajjal is also doing that. Right so behind that, him? Yeah, yeah, he's doing the Tawaf. Two men doing, yeah, the tawaf. doing the Tawaf. Okay, so that's one dream and then there's another site which there's, is in This is a site in the… In the, in in the, the, the Miraj. In the Miraj, yeah, the story of Miraj. So, the, the real question is, uh, what does that got to do with Isa Islam? Well, uh, Isa Islam <coughs> is in the, uh, in the dream and he's mirroring Isa Islam. And then the, there's another hadith uh, that your Lord is one, not one-eyed. They're the only, only religion that calls uh, uh, their prophet uh, Lord is uh, the Christians. Yeah. So that also is another hint, very clear hint. It's not just a hint, it's literally a, a, you know, of, of a full tale that the Dajjal has way more probability of coming as Christians, as uh, Isa al-Islam for the Christians. And he will have about 4 billion people following him right there. Because they're already waiting for him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the book of Revelations and the book of Matthews and also uh, book of, uh, well, in the book of Revelation, there are so much uh, stories about uh, uh, how uh, uh, the Antichrist will be recognized as Antichrist. Mm. Even though he will have the kingdom, but all of a sudden he's just come, going to come in and declare incest as, a, as an allowable sin. And that's the first sign of Antichrist. Which means that if you read the book of Revelations, I'm talking about the King James Version right now. Uh, the, actually, it's in the, all the three, the, the three versions, because this, this verse is uh, unanimously agreed upon. Uh, that uh, he's going to uh, allow the original sin, which means uh, uh, which Adam, uh, Adam's son and we could have had uh, a possibility of incest at that time, because yeah. there were only two possibilities of because yeah. uh, everyone was a son, uh, the, the brother and sister of each other literally yeah. from the same father mother yeah. so that was technically incest so that's what they actually call that you know uh, he's going to use the same logic and he's going to uh, yeah. allow the the original sin original sin means uh, uh, he's going to allow incest so a brother can marry a sister and a father can marry a daughter and a mother can marry a son 
And as soon as he's going to declare that, the Christian community is going to declare him as an antichrist. And that is the, that is the first unveiling of the un antichrist. Even though he will be given that kingdom, he will be inside the third temple. He will be the, 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 th the, the, the throne bearer of the world at that time. So uh, that's the time when the, uh, a faction of Christians will pick a fight and go to, you know, turn to swords and go to the battle against the Antichrist. And that's uh, something which the book of Revelation says. Good could be a true on all accounts. I have no uh, complaints or, uh, and, you know, uh, there's no technical error in there. Uh, however, uh, the very fact that Quran actually refused the concept of Christianity in Surah Kaf which means that that's way bigger of a confusion can Christians are going to be going through. And the biggest turmoil for Muslims is not about just the Jal. It is the army of the Jal, which is all the Christians of the world. And that is which we cannot convince them out of because that then they will have miracles. Yeah. Then they will have actual proof that their God is God, that yeah. Jesus Christ is God, that yeah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. All yeah. those Christians will have a field day on... Uh, on the Muslims and even yeah. the Jews that, you yeah. know, you actually called us that, you know, look at our Jesus, look at him bringing people from the dead. Yeah, look like at him actually claiming God. Like in us Muslims, although we do have uh, certain factions among Muslims who still believes in um, the miracles done by different sort of saints or saintly figures. But Christians, they genuinely, all of them believe in miracles done by their popes and their fathers. Yeah. And yes, their that's true. Things like this. That's true. But they don't claim to be son or God or God. They don't. Yeah. But Christians But they do. can believe that by humans, even a human can do miracles and yeah. it becomes some, something big for them. Literally. Yeah. Uh, however, the, the real point here that people should understand, since we are doing Surah Kaf here, uh, we better understand that uh, the landscape right now has a 4 billion population, which is half the world, which actually believes that there is a guy who is a son of God, who brings people uh, back from the dead, who makes uh, it rain, who makes uh, dead, barren land bear fruit, who yeah. gives uh, uh, light to the born blind, and so on and so forth. All yeah. of a sudden, all of a sudden, there will come a guy who's going to literally start doing that. Yeah. Lo and behold, there everyone were else the things is, that were done by Jesus at his time, right? There will be Anyways. literally those things, but we since don't we, we don't know what kind of account Jesus actually had. Yeah. So we will have to see what the John is going to be doing. Yeah. But yeah. that's not the problem. The problem is, Isa al Islam never claimed to be son of God, yeah. right, or God. But that's Quran is the only book which says that. Four billion people do not believe in that book. Four billion people believe that that man claimed to be God and is claiming to be son of God. So a Dajjal is going to claim that initially yeah. so that, so that the, the four billion people will literally have a blind submission upon him. Not just that, but renewal of their faith. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They will have the biggest possible proof that any, any, uh, any religion, any human, any individual would need to actually affirm, reaffirm his faith. In, and that's why I'm saying that that's a very big Easter they're going to be celebrating. And we are already like heavily influenced by everything that comes from the West. And by, I think by that time when he comes, we're going to be bombarded through our media. Oh my God, this not is just the that. Man, uh, that's the truth. Oh, that's a good this way of like, looking at it. The yeah. bad way of looking at it is that uh, we will be massacred brutally yeah. by the Christians. If we don't accept that. that yeah, yeah. And we will be. We will be. Yeah, will be. And... Uh, that's why I've said the first two ayahs are to be really not noticed because Quran, first and foremost, as soon as the Dajjal is going to convince the Christians, he naturally has to convince the rest of the three billion people, right? And that's Muslims. So how is he going to prove that? He is going to put that uh, concept of imperfection in the Quran and the word rule Allah will become a totally big, different meaning. Wow. And that's where the Muslim scholars are going to have, a lot of Muslim scholars are going to give bayah to the Dajjal that yes, since they will be looking and overwhelmed by miracles, you know, and they'll be looking at uh, like Isa al-Islam, acting mm -hmm. like Isa al-Islam, he's the correct, most, most pious, most giving, most compassionate man. Mm -hmm. And then he's telling you what the real meaning of the Ruh Allah actually mm -hmm. means. And he's naturally going to come with a middle ground between the, being the son of God or just God and so on and so forth. Yeah. And then and when we have already so many scholars that are always justifying concepts of big, huge saints like Rose Park and so, oh, yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So, so that's that. going to be a real Rose Park, you know, <laughs> right in front of you. <laughs> Here we are like justifying all the time a dead Rose Park. The Karama, yeah. The Karamas of uh, the Oliya. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's again, 
uh, that's too small of a matter because <laughs> this guy will be doing a little stuff for 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 for, for, for the <coughs> whole uh, globe and and this is something which is uh, uh, which is something which we all should know of what Surya Kaf is trying to do in the I'm just talking about the first three ayahs and it mm. opens such a big door yeah. uh, because it addresses about seven billion people already yeah. and since uh, Jews are the smallest religion right now it, it, you know, it doesn't really matter whether they believe in this or not. Yeah. Right now, what matters for us is what Christians believe in, because that's, yeah, that's the biggest problem we're going to have. From yeah, uh, yeah. and so, uh, uh, you know, we cannot even live up to uh, how to actually resist the American policy, or or the NATO policy, or whatever policy. You think we're going to be able to live against uh, the right wingers at that time of the of the of the planet? No, I don't think so. This is going to be a big problem. And we will have to submit either for the sake of our livelihood or for the sake of our life, literally, or for the sake of our of whatever kind of religion at that time we would have. And uh, we will be submitting to a Dajjal. Uh, even if those believers think that he's not uh, Isa al-Islam, they will have that sort of a leverage that Islam does allow for the sake of our saving our lives to submit to him. So and, uh, for the fear of life. For the fear because of life. Quran mentions yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah. can say yeah. Kalamar so Kufar for this, yeah. to save your life. So uh, we will have two or maybe three wow. uh, factions. So, so, so we, we might have fatwas coming from all the Literally, ulama yeah. that just say the Kalamar Kufar, yes. submit to him because yes. you're allowed to you, do so. Because he's going to kill you right there. Uh, or you will be killed right there. Subhanallah. And we don't have, we, we haven't been given any training of the way of Azima. Like, yeah, yeah. We have only Even though there are way more accounts of Sahaba putting themselves to death. Yeah. There's only one account of Ammar bin Yasir. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. there's Sahel Khubab, they were lynching him alive. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Subhanallah. Uh, this is something which we better understand. And the farther we go from the Prophet, the lesser we're going to be able to uh, withstand, uh, you know, those uh, problems which come in the way of us and our Iman. And this is why the 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 problem is. It's I mean, it's just the first three ayahs reveal so much light upon why Muslims will be submitting to a Dajjal uh, by so, hook or by crook. Okay, so then perhaps you would kill yourself through grief over them, O Muhammad, if they do not believe in the message and out of sorrow. Yeah. Indeed, we uh, have uh, made... Uh, this is something which is, uh, which is okay in another sign. Because the Prophet ﷺ, we have to understand the Prophet ﷺ, <coughs> the compassion of the Prophet ﷺ is that he was worried so much that uh, why are these people not listening to such a, you know, bayyana. Uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, no, don't, don't, don't uh, put that as such a big burden on yourself. And uh, you will, you know, uh, you know your grief is... Uh, not something which is uh, called for right now because right. you know whoever is going to come into Iman is the decision of Allah, the decree of Allah. And so uh, this is something which is uh, uh, another, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a deeper uh, meaning in that time that uh, we might have to, I, uh, God forbid, you know, it makes me cry because I'm talking about my son here, my daughter, my, my wives and kids and there will be times and most of us will go through that uh, maybe we will be those people who, for which our folks are going to go through for, for the fact that our daughters and sons are going to be running towards a Dajjal. And this is something which you might have to, we might have to just give them up. And this is something which is this ayah literally showing us that uh, your grief is something which is, which is real, but it's, it's not going to do anything. Uh, whoever is decreed as, you know, a, a person of uh, Ashabul Jannah is Ashabul Jannah. And, Ashabu Nard is Ashabu Nard is seen just only for Allah. So uh, this is this ayah actually gives us. You can only do so much. Yeah, and yeah. this ayah tells us that you know our loved ones are going to be literally, literally uh, running towards the Dajjal right in front of us, and we won't be able to help them. And there will be more people who are going towards him than than so, than we can expect. Okay, the topic now changes here. So, uh, yeah, literally. we have adorned the earth with attractive things so that we may test to people, test people to find out which of, which of them do best. I think we should read that. And indeed, okay. Auzu billahi min ash-shaitanir rajim. Inna jaalna ma ala al-ardi zina talha li nabluhum ayyhum ahsanu amala. There you go. Now this is the word which does not actually say ad-dunya. It just <coughs> says al-ard. Make sure you understand that. 
Okay. So at that time, uh, we're going to go into detail in the next episodes. We'll just give you a little preview. The Jal is not going to be using resources of just of this earth. Okay. That's where the, the bigger problem is going to happen because he's going to be producing some stuff which is un, unseen. And that is placed in some other parts. Hmm. And that's also called al Arund. And yeah. that is something which is going to uh, create a way bigger fit for, for the, the people. That are, where is he coming up with this, these sort of creatures and these? Because his donkey is he, not from this planet. Yeah. Uh, that, but, is that, but it is from Ard. Yeah. Right? So the horse of Rasulullah is on Mi'raj. Yeah, we didn't even discuss that. He was also not from Earth. Oh, of course not. We did discuss that a little, but yeah, we, we were going to discuss that in, inside. Uh, okay, so the, it means we always have to keep a very, very broader perspective of the word al Ard. Ard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to limit it to this Earth. Yeah, we, we can't. Okay. Uh, Ard means all the terrestrial planes of all the planets in all the heavens. Yeah. For example, Isa is in on Earth right now, but not in Dunya. Yeah. Because when Allah Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says a dunya, He specific, specifically means this planet Earth. Okay. Muzayyana sama'a dunya in Surah yeah. Mulk yeah. is the, the sky of our planet. Okay, yeah. You have to understand that. Muzayyana sama'a dunya. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Human beings are told that, you know, the life on this planet. Dunya. Yeah. yeah. You and know. there's in uh, even in Surah Al Baqarah where Allah says there's seven earths and seven skies. Oh, no, seven that's Al Talaq. Yeah, Surah Talaq. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So even there we have Ard. Yeah, but that's a lot of Ard. Ard, Ard. a lot of Ard. That's where we actually pick it up from. Uh, okay. That, yeah, know? that's a very very strong uh, actually evidence. Yeah, that the, the Ard is, is uh, Ard. Ard means lots of Ard all the, can be. Oh, and the biggest argument is the biggest argument number is of even Ard, even yeah. more than that. In that an intellectual level, you have to understand. Uh, that uh, Adam al -Salam, Adam al -Salam mm. was created by, by from Earth, Ard. Yeah. But we all know that Adam al -Salam was not created in this planet. Yeah. He came to this planet to later this. on. Yeah, 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 exactly. You have to understand that. Yeah. So uh, it's not like Adam was created here and then taken to heaven and then brought back. This is not the, what the account of the Quran is. Yeah. He was created from the Ard of somewhere else. Yeah. In al Surah al Hijr. We'll, we can find out of what kind of clay that actually was. Uh, was. Yeah. And that's the same clay that is mentioned in Surah Kaf. That is By the way, there is, there is a scientific research. I read it a few years uh, before. They said that <coughs> everything, all the elements or things that exist on this planet Earth, when they are tested like through different ways in the labs, they can show their origin being belonging to Earth. But just like iron does not belong to Earth, Star elements. So yeah. similarly, human kind does not belong to Earth. That is now even a scientific study. Yeah, that's true, and that also is in the Quran of when Adam al Islam was created, and the word ham, which is used for uh, the clay, which was yeah. used to create Adam al Islam, is is a totally different kind of clay. That's that's uh, that's a totally different so, clay, uh, which uh, yeah. Surah Rahman talks about. Uh, uh, of how you know uh, human beings are created, or, or or the clay of hell and the clay of heaven, and then uh, uh, we have to understand that you know there are diff totally different places where there is that kind of clay. Uh, we also have a lot of clay in this planet. That's not something which we should confuse as the only clay in the universe. Hmm. Okay, so when this ayah says, uh, uh, you know that there are so many things in the on Ard, Ard. Ard. <coughs> that you have to understand that uh, when the Jal is going to come up with stuff, you should understand that it is still. But I think I feel like um, in this ayah, it's talking about this Ard. Why? Because it says that we have adorned the earth with attractive things so that we may test people to yeah. find out which. No, no, that's literally the actually exact meaning of why I take it that it's not going to be from this earth. Okay, but the, the test is of these people being tested. Yeah. Test is of these people. But the things are from other planets. Oh, okay. We are talking about in the context of the Jal. The Jal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. At the Jal is going to bring about some stuff which is going to be a big test yeah. for these people of how can this. Not just the Jal, like we have so many things that are going to be coming to this. Oh, well, we'll talk about that in uh, later verses. So yeah. many different creatures which are like not from Ad here. Like Ard. Dabatul Ard. It's still Ard, but it's not going to come from this planet. Yeah. Because this planet animals don't speak. Yeah. That is an animal which is going to speak. Yeah. And it is also going to come from 
somewhere else somewhere on else. this planet and how he comes to this planet again can be is a portal sign. can be anything well, well it is a portal and because then, at that time all portals are open then we have yajuj majuj also from some other they, planet yeah, yeah they they don't belong or to some other portal or some yeah. other dimension yeah uh, so and, uh, these are all uh, then the birds who going to carry their dead bodies again yeah. or also uh, the birds who came from uh, for uh, asabal feel asabal feel yeah, yeah, yeah those yeah. are the birds who never people never saw and yeah. people never saw again yeah yeah so and whatever they did they did not do something which happened scientifically on anything uh on this not earth. just on this uh, yeah. with with the thing the weapon that they used also whatever happened to their body was not normal on under the laws of physics that happens to things cuz they decay in matter of seconds subhanallah okay you know what i'm saying so they didn't just throw stones yeah there was something else but they threw else. something with the stones some yeah. chemical or something or maybe there is a regular stone in some planet where they come from wow which has a different chemical composition totally different that and our can bodies cannot adhere to that sort of chemistry Wow. Yeah, that's that's okay. something which uh well, now this is surah feel sort of almost all muslims read this in um every prayer. Yeah. <laughs> But we never thought about it like this. Yeah, so Seriously, that's uh, I never thought about it this like this. Subhanallah. And so that's an elephant we're talking about, you know. It took it takes a lot of years before an elephant And becomes And they were the people of elephant. Like they had an an army of elephants yeah, yeah, yeah. who were crushed within a very seconds, little time. Seconds. And then they even decayed. right there they decayed right in front of him everybody saw that them getting decayed yeah so abdul mutlib saw the elephants getting decayed abdul mutlib cannot be seeing that all of all of that decay because it takes years for an elephant to decay yeah so probably it was not just a miracle of birds throwing stones but probably what followed it was a Both bigger are, miracle for the people of, of makkah at that time uh well i think they actually didn't really you know a pay heed to uh, how Miracle these birds came like, in it's, yeah it's allah's house so he did I, whatever he did i personally put. for abdul mutlib uh, i actually think that he, he he knew all of that cuz the kind of dreams he saw before the oh, i think he saw he, he could yeah, tell a lot yeah, more yeah yeah in the sea a lot of things uh, yeah. a lot of things a lot of weird things happened to abdul mutlib and so i i think he had a uh, cuz you know it's not a regular statement you make to a guy that you know just give me back my camels uh I'll leave the cover to the lord of kaaba <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. it's not a regular statement this yeah. guy has uh seen a lot of weird things and uh, we just don't know it so i don't know why we settle or how we settle abdul mutlib psychology in his uh life and uh, you know cuz you know abi zamzam uh, the story of uh, yeah. uh abdullah uh, all of these things were uh, really extraordinary extraordinary Yeah. extraordinary they're weirdly extraordinary yeah and i'm probably yeah. using the word weird because strange he lived a very strange uh, i mean a lot of strange happenings happened to uh, abdul mutlib so okay. okay you know even if he did uh, those people didn't really you know uh, you know they took it a little superstitiously and uh, they said that you know allah sent his sent his uh, special birds as a, a certain uh, punishment to abraha but uh, we know that you know that's as weird as it gets subhanallah okay <clears throat> then the next aya but the reminiscence is very clear the same kind of portal is going to open to send different kind of birds yeah. who are going to going to carry a uh, yajuj al majuj yeah all of a sudden the sky is going to fill up with those birds and you know cuz yajuj majuj are going to be in billions yeah subhanallah wow Okay and indeed we will make that which is upon it into a barren ground. Yeah. Okay, now the story starts. Or um, sorry. Let me I've lost track. Okay. Um. Okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. O oh, Prophet, do you find the companions in the cave and Al-Raqim so wondrous among all our other signs? When the young men sought refuge in cave and said, "Our Lord, grant us your mercy and find us a good way out of your ordeal." Uh, this is uh, I think okay, let's, uh, let's just finish this cuz you got at number 8 right now. 
number 10 this one was number 10 uh, yeah okay so uh, this is a uh, let's just finish the first chapter of the first 10 verses okay. well, we are going to go into surah kaf in detail okay. but the first 10 verses uh, have this uh, uh, story started for, for uh, the yeah. uh, ashab kaf now yeah now uh, see this is this is some some of one of the biggest uh, help that we could get uh, uh, from Surah Kaf that uh, the Surah's name is called Kaf. Yeah. Okay. And that's a cave. And uh, there's a story of uh, certain people who are fleeing. And uh, when uh, the Prophet said, when you see a Dajjal, just flee. For you cannot okay. find or fight or kill him. And that's exactly what happened to the people of the cave. They could not fight or kill that, that tyrant. So what they did was they fleed. And this is a, a very big uh, indicator of uh, what we should be doing. Hmm. When uh, the child is going to come, we should be fleeing. But just like yeah. a sabi calf. So, yeah. uh, in, uh, in other words, uh, you know, figuratively speaking, they had uh, the jal of their time. And then they fleed into a cave. And that cave turned out to be a time travel. You know, uh, so I think uh, this is pretty much a, a a clue as to what we are going to be or we should be doing. And those people will be the people of the cave uh, who are going to be running towards mountains and fleeing and trying to hide and wither out the period of Ad-Dajjal. Because hmm. believers will not have any other choice but to wither the period of Ad-Dajjal. Okay, so ayah number 9 and 10. Yeah. It just mentions... Mention a little a story about the Jal of our A time, not literally, but you know, a tyrant mm. king, mm. and people cannot fight him, so they're fleeing, and they're fleeing towards a cave, and that mountain has a cave, and that cave actually makes them wither that tyrant uh, through time. Yeah. So that's what the instruction to all Muslims is: when you find uh, the Jal, flee, flee. towards where mountains. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, those people will be at the level of the people of the cave. Who are going to find the jaw and still would be believers, and instead of fighting or doing something or giving bayah, they will flee towards the mountains, and the surah kaf might just be able to uh, convert that uh, into a, a, a or, or, or a way for them to wither at the jaw's time period. Uh, however, so it's going to do that. We're going to cover that later on through uh, the story so of Zulkarnain uh, and uh, Musa alayhi salam. And, uh, the very concepts that actually uh, they are given in. Um, so this is uh, the first 10 ayahs. So I think we should, uh, yeah. We should take a break here. Yeah, I we think. should take a break uh, for okay. the 10 ayahs so because we can pick up a lot of speed in from the, the 11th ayah to the uh, 30th ayah. And then uh, that's going to be all about the surah, uh, the people of the cave. Okay, inshallah. So inshallah, we'll see you in our next uh, episode. Inshallah, Inshallah. which will start from the ayah number 11 of Surah Al-Kahf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.